Hi everybody, I'm Jeremy. This is another episode of Live Wire Review. Today we're gonna plan a trip from Midland, Ontario to Montreal. I just wanted to show you how we would use PlugShare on the app when we're planning this trip. You can use a better route planner, you can use the navigation in the car, but sometimes it's not always reliable the information that they give you. So you have to be a little bit educated when you plan a trip in these cars. If you own a Tesla, as you saw in one of my recent videos. Oh my goodness, okay, try again, try again. He's leaving! It's a lot easier to plan a trip in that car. All you have to do is enter the destination. You know the supercharger is gonna work on the way there because the car gives you that information on the route. And if it changes, it's going to give you the new information. But when you drive something like a Hyundai or a Ford, they do have built-in things in the navigation. They just don't work as well as the Tesla system does. So what I'd like to do is walk you through how to use PlugShare to choose the most reliable chargers. You can see that they have an actual live status and maybe a couple of the other apps along the way. So stay tuned and let's get into it. So I just wanted to give an example of what this is like in our car when we go to search a destination. We have the latest map data in here, so it should be very similar to other Hyundai products on the market. So we're just searching up Montreal. That's fairly straightforward, it's 500 kilometers away, but we have an estimated range of 302 kilometers. So let's see what this does. It's doing connected routing, which means it connects to a server, and it says insufficient charge to reach de destination. So as we've discussed before, this is a lot better than it used to be. So let's see what search for stations does. Now this is only gonna search for stations that were current as of the time of this update. So they're not all gonna be here. And I do like this option here where it says a long route instead of just near current and near destination. So we know we can go about 300 kilometers on this chart, but we don't wanna go all the way there. Let's go back to a long route. Got name, distance, 50, 60, 100 kilometers away. It's funny that these didn't all show up right away. Let's go down this list. And the furthest one away is in Oshawa, which is kind of funny because I think I would want to choose a little bit further than that. But let's try Oshawa. King Street, set as destination. Now we don't know anything about this charging station. It just says EV charging station. So what I would highly recommend is that we head over to PlugShare and we double check this charging station or at least ones around it and maybe pick one like that instead. Okay, here we are on the betterrouteplanner.com website and we've entered our vehicle here. So first thing you have to do is log in and create an account, of course. But once you have the account set up, you can add your cars. You can go to settings. I've added the Hyundai Kona here, 64 kilowatt hour. This number right here, the reference consumption, is actually set by the program. It was set at 16.2 kilowatt hours per hundred as an estimate for how much this car would use on the highway. I just went a little bit higher with that just to be safe. And I set a couple of the settings down here, like the battery, 10% arrival at the chargers, max charger 80%. Usually this is what you do on a road trip. You can set things like speed, your vehicle, the degradation, road conditions, real-time weather, and a couple of these other things here. Now, when you go in here, you'll see some options like charger availability and that real-time weather, and I believe the road conditions like the actual traffic. You'll have to pay for the premium version of a better route planner in order to get some of these items. So we're just gonna go out of the settings now because we got some basic settings in there. And we're going from Midland, Ontario to Montreal and we're just gonna hit go. Let's see what happens. So it's given us the, uh, the best route that we should take. If you notice, as you go up through Ottawa here, this would take an additional two hours because of the lack of public infrastructure in this part of the province. So it is best to stick with the highways because there's a lot more infrastructure where you're going. You don't have to follow all the details on this plan. You can just use this as a rough guide. And it does give you some estimates for how much it's gonna take every time you stop. For example, here on the first one, it says 12% to 62%. This is typically how you would drive on a road trip with an EV. The lower the state of charge of the battery, the faster it's gonna charge. 
Now on a Hyundai Kona Electric, it's not gonna charge quickly anyways. It only charges between 50 and 70 kilowatts on average. So just pick whatever charge state is good for you and keep going. So this is just an example of what chargers to use. You don't have to choose the ones that they put on a better route planner. These are just some of the Ivy stations that are on the way. Ivy is a pretty good charging network, but they're not the best. Electrify Canada and Ivy tend to use some of the same equipment and they seem to have some equipment failures along the way. What I would highly recommend is choosing anything with a flow charger or a charge point charger first and then an Ivy or an Electrify Canada. And then if you're left with any of the other networks, probably just go with those if you have to. More options is better than less options. So what I like to do is, um, for example, here, we got the En Route Port Hope. I will go over to Plug Share and I will actually see what else is available in that area because then you can see what options we have. We have a supercharger, we can't use that one because this is a CCS car. The Volkswagen dealer can't use that because oftentimes dealerships will close their doors when their business hours are done. So it is best to choose dealerships only during business hours if you have to as a second resort. You'll also see another dealership here it says outer lot. Sometimes the notes in here actually really help. If you open them up, they'll let you know if they're open or not. And this one is a flow charger. It says they're available, five available of the regular level two. The Chatamo and CCS have one available. This dealership looks like you're gonna be able to go and charge anytime and a flow charger you know is gonna work. Now, if you're not driving a Hyundai Kona, picking a 50 kilowatt station is gonna add a bit of time to your trip. If you had something like an Ionic 5, Ionic 6, or a Maki, -E, or a Lightning, or anything that charges 150 kilowatt stations better, you're gonna triple your time sometimes if you go to a 50 kilowatt station. So we're just gonna zoom out from this location for a second here because you wanna see what other options are along the route. With the public charging network, you never know if it's gonna be occupied or not when you get there. So you could have a little bit of, out of a surprise. So what's nice about this location, let's say taking the 401 over to Montreal, you're gonna see a couple of different chargers along the way, which means that if one's broken, you're definitely gonna find a charge nearby. And if you leave enough room in your charge before you run out, you know you're gonna find a place to charge. Now, sometimes I just, I don't use a better route planner. I will just go to the map and I will say, hey, I know my car is gonna make it about this far. And so I'll pick an area on the map that I know is like, I don't know, a couple hundred kilometers away. And then you look for the area of the map with the most orange dots because the orange dots are the level three chargers on the plug share map. All the green ones here are level two. You would pick those ones if you're staying at a hotel overnight or if you just have a longer period to park. So for example, here we got Audi, we have a Harley Davidson. So these two right off the bat, I know are probably not gonna be good choices because dealerships close during, during the night. And we got another one here. Thixon Ridge Power Center, you open it up and it gives you details about what's there. It's got four CCS charge plugs available. And what's nice is this information is actually available right here on the website or on the app. You don't have to open up the Flow or the ChargePoint app to know if these chargers are in use. It will show it for any station that shares that information with PlugShare, which is very handy because it's all available in one place. Another nice thing about PlugShare is you have check-ins from people who are using the stations to let you know if they're actually working or not. And the last time somebody successfully charged to show you if the equipment is still working. I'm gonna use an example here on the map. If I zoom out, we went on a trip out east last year and we had to go to Cape Breton. And Cape Breton only has two chargers along the way at the time of this video. So let's just zoom in here to the Cape Breton map. There's only a couple of fast chargers in the entire area. So you have to plan ahead. One of them was at the Bedeck Linwood Inn. And this charger was out of service when we went on our trip. But we knew that beforehand because we looked up the charger's availability on PlugShare before we decided to go around here. Now, you might want to turn off the level two chargers when you're looking for this, because as you can see, I know this charger's here, but you can't see it because it's hidden behind this level two. So let's open it up. Sobeys, North Sydney. This is the only other one in the Cape Breton area. 
But what's nice is the information is shown right here that someone is currently using that charger. Now that's not an issue if you are headed out there in a little while, that car is not going to be there when you get there. But it is nice to see that it's working and that it's in use. So another thing I wanted to show you on the PlugShare website or even on the app is you can go over here and you can actually pick what type of plugs do you want to show up. Do you want to show the level 2 chargers? Do you want to show the fast chargers? What do we want to show? So I can turn off Tesla ones because that's not going to help us when we're driving a CCS enabled vehicle. So we'll turn off both of those. Although this one right here, this one's a level 2 Tesla. And as you saw, we have the A2Z adapters. So our Kona will actually be able to use destination chargers from Tesla. So if you're looking for level 2 stations, I myself would be able to choose this because of the A2Z adapter. This is an adapter I would recommend you get because it opens up a lot of charging options in different areas. We're going to turn off this, we're going to turn off the 1450s, turn off the Tesla, the J1772 and the Chatamo, and this TT30. And all we're going to show on the map is all the level 3 CCS enabled chargers. That way you don't have a whole bunch of clutter that you have to go through when you're looking up your fast chargers. So as you can see now, it's very clear that in Cape Breton there are only three available. And this one's actually new. This one's been added since the last time I was here. But there's no network, so you can't see if it is available at this time. You would actually have to call ahead and see if it's still working. But luckily, there's a couple of check-ins here that shows November 2nd last year and May 20th this year from an F-150 Lightning, showing that it does work. So there is no information shown whether this charger is available right now, but you can see from the check-ins that this charger is working at the moment because there was a recent check-in today showing that this charger works. So by taking out the level two chargers, you don't have so much clutter when you're looking at the map. And I've taken out all the Tesla chargers to make it very clear where our vehicle can charge. This is so much simpler to look at. As you can see, if you go to the Toronto area, there are so many chargers to choose from. It's just crazy. I love that amount of choice in the charging market. And as you can see, the 401 has many different chargers along the route and we're not cluttered up by all those level two chargers on here. And you can go along here, you see ones that have one star, some that have 10 stars. It's really good review system. You know where it's gonna work and where it isn't. And if I pick around here, I see lots of chargers in one area. So this might be a good place to plan your stop or at least your first stop. And then another way to do this would be, I see a lot around Kingston. So instead of following what it says on the A Better Route Planner map, you, can, you see that there are actually two stops here in the same areas and probably for that same reason because there is a cluster of chargers around that you can choose from. You don't have to go to the ones that are on the Better Route Planner app. You can just choose which ones had a good review and you know are going to work when you get there. I would also suggest ones that have a lot more than one outlet. That way if one of them isn't working or if there are vehicles there, you can see in this case we have four outlets, 150 kilowatts. This would be the one to choose because it's 10 stars and you know it's going to work. So all I would do is I would take this address and I would add it as a side trip in the navigation and then just continue on your trip. And that is how we use PlugShare in order to make our lives easier because the in-car navigation is not as good as you think it should be and the public charging network is not integrated into the vehicle in the way we would like. In a Tesla vehicle, this is so much easier because it will route you through the superchargers. And if there happens to be an issue with that supercharger, it will continue to redirect you to a different supercharger and it preps the car on the way there. Now, our vehicles, we can't do that because they're not on the Tesla network and you cannot use Tesla superchargers at this time. Now, just for a second here, I am going to actually take out all of the level three charge stations. I just wanted to show you one more thing before we go. If you're planning a trip down to the city, any city, doesn't matter. Uh, if you're going to be parked there for a while, it actually really does help to go into PlugShare. If you find a place that you're going to go, a lot of people in Toronto, we're going to go around the main part down by the water, especially if there's any events going on. So when I have to go somewhere in Toronto, I find a parking lot that has chargers built in. 
So around Union Station, there's a whole bunch you can go to. You don't have to go to the main parking lots. You don't have to go by the ones at the CN Tower. So for example, here at the Rogers Center, there's literally only one plug in the entire parking lot. So you're likely not going to get this. It would be a good thing to pick a totally different parking lot and see what's available. This was a neat one that I found when I was looking for parking lots in Toronto. We were headed to the Ed Mervish Theatre one night to see a show. So I was checking out all the different parking lots around, seeing how many plugs were available. And then I stumbled across this one right here, the State Street Financial Centre. If I open this one up, this is what parking lots of the future need to be like. They need to emulate this place. It's incredible. You pay for parking as you would anywhere else in Toronto. But look at this. There are 12 J1772 plugs, but this is even more astounding. There are 48 plugs of destination chargers for a Tesla. The parking was reasonable in this location and there was chargers everywhere. You were guaranteed to get a spot with a charger. Now, with that A to Z adapter that we have, these Tesla destination chargers are actually open to us now. So if all of these J1772s are taken, and since there is only 12 of them, they, there is a good possibility that they could be taken. So this opens up four times as many plugs that you could use while you're parked downtown. And then you would never need a fast charge to get home. You would come back to your car and it'll be fully charged by the time you go. Well, we've reached the end of this video. I'd like to hear what you think. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know what kind of charging tips you would like me to film in the future. And if you found this video helpful, just like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.